Here's a problem in which we have projectile motion. And projectile motion is basically just a fancy way of saying 2D motion when we have an object that is subject to only gravity. Now, the usual uh, motion equations that we typically use for 1D problems will still work here, but they will only work separately in each dimension. So we want the, so the variables won't necessarily apply universally in every case. Uh, the one variable that is universal is time, so that's usually the first thing we want to solve in these problems. But let's see here. In the case of this problem, we've got, uh, we're falling from a rock that is 7.5 meters high. So the height of the rock can be seen as the travel time or the displacement in the y direction. So delta y is given to us, 7.5 meters, and how far from the base of the rock she will land, that's a horizontal range. So delta x is what we are trying to find. Like I said, usually time is the first thing we want to find, since that's the only universal variable that is the same for every dimension. So let's uh, pick an equation of motion that we'll want to use to find how long it takes for the tiger to hit the floor. I'm going to go with the position equation, the one that says that delta x or delta y, depending on which we're looking at, is equal to the initial speed times time plus one half times a t squared, acceleration times time squared. Because first off, this term cancels out because at the beginning of the motion, as soon as she horizontally leaps, there's going to be no initial speed in that direction. And also we've got time, which we want to find, and the acceleration is just g, it's just gravity. So let's solve this for t. We divide both sides of the equation by one half a, and then take the square root of the whole thing, and we find that t is equal to the square root of 2 times delta y divided by, um, by g, which is it's a, but I'm replacing it with g here since it's acceleration due to gravity. And if you put this into our calculator, if we put into our calculators the square root of 2 times delta y, the change in height, which is 7.5 meters, and then divide that by 9.81, all that in a square root, then we find a time of about 1.237 seconds. So that's how long it takes the tiger to reach the, the bottom. But now that we know that, now we can use this time to find the horizontal range. Because remember, in the horizontal direction, uh, we're not being, ex being subjected to g, to gravity. In the horizontal direction, there's actually no acceleration at all as long as we're ignoring air resistance. So the whole time, so, so the whole time that the tiger is falling, it's, uh, they're moving uh, in the horizontal direction at a constant speed, basically. And that constant speed is given to us as 3.0 meters per second. That was given to us in the problem right here. So now let's just use the usual equation for speed, but in the, in the horizontal direction. So the horizontal speed, or v sub x, is equal to um, the change in position of x, the range, what we, delta x, what we want to find, divided by the time, which we now have. So if we multiply both sides of that equation by t, we find that delta x, what we're looking for, is equal to the horizontal component of the speed times time. So if we put this into our calculator, if we put in 3.0 meters per second for v sub x, and then put in 1.237 seconds in for t, then we find a horizontal range. We find a distance of 3.7 meters, which means that that is how far the tiger landed from the rock. And that is our solution to this problem. I hope this video helped you out. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. Uh, if you have a request for a future video you'd like me to make, um, I've got a Discord server linked in the description where I try to help people out, and hopefully I could help you out if you've got if there, you've got a problem that you'd like me to make a video on. But that is all for today. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and have a good night.